Welcome to the How to Play for Papillon. In this game, players will draft garden tiles to create fields and a butterfly garden in an attempt to earn the most nectar. You'll earn nectar by adding butterflies to flowers, collecting gnomes, and managing your garden. After eight rounds, the player with the most nectar is the winner. Before we get started, let's look at a couple things you should know first about components and concepts. Caterpillars. These serve two purposes in the game. First, they are your currency you will use to bid for drafting order each round. And second, each one in your possession at the end of the game counts as one nectar. Garden Tiles The garden tiles are used to build up your personal garden. These consist of patches and fields. Patches are made up of any number of flower segments of the same color. Closing these is required to gain any benefit. Fields are made up of any number of connected field segments and closing these is also required to gain any benefit. Gnomes. Gnomes serve different purposes within the game. First, they are used to track the game rounds, with one being placed on each space of the round track. Second, one gnome is available each round to be drafted by a player choosing tiles from specific spaces of the game board. Third, after a player acquires a gnome via the draft, they gain the number of caterpillars indicated on the token. Additionally, in the event of a tie, the player with the most gnomes is the winner. Butterflies Butterflies are used by players to earn nectar by placing them onto the stand-up flowers. We'll look at this more closely later on. Flowers and Planters These are assembled prior to starting the game, and they are where players will be placing butterflies throughout the game. Planters have three values printed on them which indicate the nectar scoring values players can earn at the end of the game. Bonus Tokens one bonus token is placed on each planter during setup. When a player closes a flower patch of three or more tiles and adds a butterfly to a stand-up flower of that color, they take the bonus token if one is still available. When receiving the bonus token, the player may immediately add another butterfly to that flower. This must be done at the time the token is taken. For the purposes of this video, we will not be covering the full setup. Please refer to your rulebook for this as it fully lays out the steps and setting up Papillon is quick and easy. How to play. A game of Papillon consists of eight rounds, with each round having four phases. Preparation, drafting, gardening, and butterfly. All scoring will take place at the end of the game. Preparation phase. First, draw 10 tiles from the bag and fill in all of the draft spaces of the board. Place a caterpillar on any tile with the caterpillar icon. Take the face down gnome tile for the current round and place it face up on the gnome space between the second row and second column of the tiles as indicated by the gnome icon. Now players will bid for draft order. The player in position 1 on the bid order track makes the first bid to determine drafting order for the tiles by moving their gardener to one of the spaces numbered 1 through 5 or the rightmost 0 space. The player then pays the indicated number of caterpillars by returning them to the supply. Any player that bids zero will receive bonus caterpillars indicated by the multiplier near the space after all players have placed their bids. Each remaining player, based on their position of the bid order track, moves their gardener in the same way. Note that when placing on the zero space, if another gardener currently occupies the rightmost space, that gardener and any to the left are moved one space to the left and the current player bidding places their gardener on the now vacant space. After all players have completed their bidding, any player who bids zero receives the bonus printed on the space where their gardener is located. Now move all gardeners to the bid order track in the same order left to right. Drafting phase. The player whose gardener is in the first position of the bid order track drafts any row or column from the board that contains at least one tile and adds those to their play area. Repeat this for each player in turn order. When a player drafts a tile with a caterpillar on it, they also gain the caterpillar token. The first player to draft all of the tiles in either the second row or second column also takes the gnome token from the tool shed and adds that to their play area. They also receive the number of caterpillars indicated on the token. If no player drafts the tiles needed to claim the gnome, then the token is simply removed from the game at the end of the round. A note here. A player may have up to 12 caterpillars. If a player has more than 12 as a result of the drafting, they must return any excess to the general supply. Additionally, any time a player drafts a column or row that only contains a single tile, they draw an additional random tile from the bag. 
This ensures that every player ends up with a minimum of two tiles in the draft phase. Gardening phase. Each player now takes their drafted tiles and places them in their garden following these rules. Except for the very first tile placed in round one, each tile must always be placed touching another tile. Once placed, tiles can no longer be moved. A player is, however, permitted to try multiple placements and locations for the tiles during the current round until they are satisfied with the final placement. Each side of a tile placed must match the tile that it's touching. There are five possible matches, red, blue, yellow, and purple flowers, as well as fields. Flower patches must be connected to flowers of the same color. Once two or more tiles have been connected with no remaining sides that can be connected to the same color, a patch is now considered closed. When a player closes a flower patch, they place one of their butterflies from either supply or a stand-up flower onto that patch. Fields are similar to closed flower patches, but have no immediate game effect. They will score at the end of the game. Butterfly phase. Players resolve their butterfly phase in reverse bid order. The player that drafted last places their butterflies on stand-up flowers one at a time. When placing butterflies, there are two options for doing so. If the flower patch closed was only two tiles in size, the player adds their butterfly to any flower of that color as long as there is not already nine butterflies on it. The player clips their butterfly to any part of the flower with sufficient space to do so. If the flower patch closed, however, was three or more tiles in size, the player adds their butterfly again to any flower of the same color as long as there's not already nine present and takes the bonus token if it has not already been claimed for that planter. When claiming a bonus token, the player may immediately add one of their butterflies from either their supply or another stand-up flower to that stand-up flower. End of round. If this was the eighth round, then proceed to end of game. Otherwise, follow these steps. Remove any undrafted garden tiles from the game board and remove them from the game. If the gnome available for the round was not drafted, remove it from the game. Begin a new round by proceeding to the preparation step. End of game. The game ends after eight rounds. Using the score pad, players score the following in order. Flower scoring. The player with the most butterflies on a flower earns the highest nectar value printed on the planter. All remaining nectar values are awarded in descending order based on the number of butterflies on the flower. If two or more players are tied, they receive the same number of nectar relative to other players on the flower. Remaining caterpillars. Each player receives one nectar for each remaining caterpillar that they have. Butterflies in closed fields. Each player scores one nectar for each butterfly shown in each closed field. Largest closed patches. Each player also scores two nectar per tile in each of their two largest closed patches. The player with the highest nectar value now wins the game. In the event of a tie, the player with the most gnomes is the winner. If still tied, then the players share in the victory. This concludes the how to play for Papillon. Additionally, within the rulebook, there are rules for a two-player variant as well as for an expert gnome variant. Please refer to your rulebook for these. As this how to play was created during the crowdfunding period of the game, some rules and components may have changed. Always refer to your most recent rulebook for any changes. Thank you for watching.